what's up. So, last time you guys were able to sell a little bit of your LS wheat at the Vesuvius bar. And Kron got into a very fun event with a bunch of women. Murdoch. Murdoch got absolutely fucking hammered. And Percy was there. Lucy walked in mm -hmm. on the whole mess with Kron. And. Sorna marks a wingman off of his to do list. Excellent. And now it is the morning after. Percival has woken up and Lucy's probably, you know what, all of you have woken up. And we're still in the back room? Yep, you're still in the back room. Kron, Kron wakes up and he promptly look. He he just looks at himself, and he casually casts prestidigitation. <laughs> and then he looks at his hand, like, whoa. He stares in awe at his hands at what he just did. Oh, I thought the stuff hadn't worn off yet. <laughs> and then I'm he. I'm trying to tell if he's confused about the prestidigitation or about. I don't know. You, you see him cast prestidigitation and summon a butterfly. <laughs> and he, he looks in absolute awe of what he's able to do now. God damn it, Cron. Are you a wild magic sorcerer? Be. Uh, Sor Sorna looks over. He he probably found like a side couch or something to sleep on. Yeah. A, a suitcase next to him, and, and he gets up and is like, "Cron, <clears throat> sorry, <clears throat> Cron, you might want to uh, put on clothing, even though you do not have much. It might be uh, preferable for our uh, companions." <clears throat> Ah, uh, yeah, yes, yes, I, I agree, it might be a good idea. And yes, Kron does put on his leather armor. I'm sitting at the bar stool holding a book open, and without moving my mouth, I just kind of look over to Sarnot like, so, you guys had fun last night, huh? Oh, no, no, no. Carefully business for me. Although, I can mark Wingman off of my to-do list, as uh, Kron is now... A uh, man, I think, in his culture. Mm. Mm -hmm. I I am also apparently much more. I did I do any of this magic last night? Mm. <laughs> he kind of just laughs to himself. Mm. That is not very. No. no, 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 no. Bad, bad joke. Bad joke. You did no magic last night, from what I could tell. Hmm. Perhaps, uh... Perhaps that Ellis Wheat has awoken my draconic powers. <laughs> I don't know too many dragons that have magic except for, like, the broth. Ah, uh, dragons are very adept spellcasters. Hmm. It's just that, you know, it's much easier to slaughter something with your claw than it is to cast a spell. I mean, when you're like the biggest thing in existence, you could probably just step in their general direction and they will probably explode. Exactly. Yeah, Lucy's still paging through her newly found book here. Yeah, yeah. That's nice. And you guys see that Murdoch has not woken up no not completely he's groaning and moaning and stuff roll for control <laughs> you know what uh that be a strength check? 
Sorna, Sorna <laughs> looks at uh, Murdoch. Is, you either drink too much or play too much Dwarf Fortress. I don't see anybody uh, who else... I don't see anybody else playing Dwarf Fortress, so I'm going to assume it was alcohol. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, yeah. He had a... He, Percival starts, you know, hoisting Murdoch over his shoulder. Kind of, you know. It's kind, of, it's kind of difficult being a human trying to do that. Yeah. So it's more of he just picks up uh, Murdoch's arm and starts dragging him. Sornak cring- <laughs> cringes as he as uh, he starts to as he starts to carry Murdoch, imagining how it would be if he carried Murdoch, even though Sornak could actually probably do it with his strength score. <laughs> probably could. You could probably act as his walking cane. Yes. Mm-hmm. And. But, uh, Wait, yeah. Wait, no, dwarves are also small. No, dwarves are medium. Yeah. Are they medium? Yep. Yeah, they are. Uh, all right. They're on the small range, though. They're, like, they're max five four, feet. They're, like, yeah, they're, like, four and a half feet tall on average, so. But. I'm not gonna be no walking cane. Percival. Horrible. <laughs> indeed helps Murdoch to his feet, and he says, I'm gonna just take him back to my dorm and you know you know kind of make sure he's all right okay just gonna let it sleep him off huh yeah just gonna let him sleep him sleep it off maybe make him some ramen (laughs) i'll i'll I'll, you know text text me if anything goes down hey before you go uh do you know any other places we can be selling this uh stuff because we didn't sell that as much as i thought we would in that back room there well you could go a couple miles and at the edge of town there's a really nice bar well not really a bar it's more like a club what's the name of that one it is the astro crag they call it the astro crag because they have a really big stage kind of like a mountain where you can see all the strippers and i'm pretty sure that with all the loud music and whatnot you can easily easily sell your entire supply in one night (laughs) uh did our uh did that uh what sort of would know his name joker has forgotten Fenris? The, um, no, 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 no. The hmm. the guy that we stole this job from. Kyle. Kyle. Yes. Did did uh, Kyle mention this place to you? No, but mm-hmm. he may have he may have had someone also deal at the Astro Crag. Mm-hmm. I. Just. I don't know. Just, I always I always bought from here. Just just curious. Yeah, but, it's it's nice you. and quiet here, you know. Take some no, Google before we search. get moving, we should probably check up on uh, Fenra, shouldn't we? Yes. Or has he... I mean, I don't think he knows we went to the back room. I do not think he does. He is not in the group chat because he does not have a phone. Yeah, kind of hard to get in contact with a wizard when he doesn't have a phone. Yeah. Um, while while we decide on what to do, Sornot does a Google search of the Astro Quag, looking for a location... And seeing if that location happens to be in that range of that one person's area, I'll get the exact name. Wait, Mama Google. Madre! Yes, Mama Madre. Such a redundant name. But I like the way it rolls off the tongue, so we're going with it. Hey, it's Mama Madre! That's Mama Madre to you! But the Astro Crag is, contrary to what Percy said, only one and a half miles away. Okay, so it should be... In, with how we were told about it, we like, from him and also from when I, Outlander told us about everything, we should be good to go there and not encounter Mama Madre, yes? Yeah, it's a couple. It's a one and a half miles north. All right, all right. Yeah, okay. Making sure. Mm-hmm. 
Okay. So it's within Outlander territory from my understanding of this map thing. So you should be good to go there and not get shanked for selling on somebody else's land. <laughs> well, I certainly hope not. So we're going to check up on Fenris. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, if you guys want to do that. We should yeah. also go uh, check in with our uh, limo buddy. See if he's gotten anything good out of this. Excursion. Well, I'm not entirely sure if he would give us another ride unless he has, in fact, gotten a lot of business from Which is why us, we should cause... ask him. Yeah. As far as I know, Percy only talked to the one person to say, hey, your girlfriend wanted a limo ride. Uh, check this dude out. I don't know if there's been any more sales since then. Overnight. <laughs> but Well... We, we let's go find out about Fenris first then and we can decide if the limo driver is that important afterwards it's only yeah I still have Andrew's number if you need it no no, no I've, I've got it too mm-hmm all right don't go so by phone. <laughs> all right so after you're all pre prepared Kron you know press the digitations himself clean He did and, it again? Yeah. yeah just, he's, just he's, to make sure. He's, he's, still in, <laughs> he's still fascinated by what the LS Wheat has awoken inside of him. <laughs> I, I'm sure it was the drugs. Okay. Drug-induced sorcerer levels. Don't you love it? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I should take a snap at it. Maybe I'd actually learn something useful in my spell list. Or it could be possible. <laughs> <laughs> or it could be possible that someone took the arcane trickster archetype. That too. I yeah, don't know when you sure said when you, when you said spontaneous magic. I was like, oh boy, they <laughs> see... it's wild magic zone. Oh no! Well, no, it's like you said <laughs> butterfly and then draconic heritage. Yeah, yeah, kobolds. You know they have kinship with dra dragons. I know, but I thought I, there were two different uh, sorcerer classes that kind of lines with. So that's why I was thinking it. Mm-hmm. Also, yeah. I just like the idea of drug-induced sorcerer levels. <laughs> <laughs> it's a possibility, but... No, okay, so how are you guys going to look for Fenris, huh? Uh... I'm just following Lucy's lead here. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if we ever actually heard where he was going. He just said he had to go look into something. Mm -hmm. So I'm not... I have no idea where he would have gone off to. Mm. Uh, I mean, we could, could ask around and see if down. anybody's seen an elf, but then there'd be more people that have seen us. And I don't know if I actually want people knowing we were here. Uh, what's Except wrong with people? The back room people. What's wrong with people knowing you're there? Because we still have drugs, and if they know where the drugs were being sold or something, I, I, I don't know. I don't think there is a single student that's going. <clears throat> I don't think there is a single student that's going to honestly route it. That is honestly going to uh, sell us out, unless mm -hmm. we give them a horrible deal. So. As long as we don't overcharge more than what Kyle was charging, I think we're going to be fine. Yeah, yeah. I was thinking so, uh, 60 yeah. from now on, just, just no. to keep things rolling. Yeah, just uh, we'll head back to the spot where we saw him last. And weren't we supposed to meet him someplace at midnight? I thought he was supposed to meet us at the bar. I think he said he would meet you at the bus stop. Oh, at the bus stop. You think he's still at the bus stop? I mean, it's kind of morning now, right? It is morning. So... Hey, at, at worst, he's meditating. Sorry, at worst, he's gone. At best, he's probably just meditating there, or whatever elves do. Got this, like, trance thing going on. Weird. Well, the problem is, if he is meditating, that means that his armor's down and we're screwed. But... <laughs> I, I mean... Who here stabs someone that looks like they're homeless at a bus stop 
at random hours in the morning. There's Pen crime shows in this. <laughs> Pen Penris, yeah. Penris does look pretty homeless, though. That's the thing. I Here's thought he had thing. his Arbiter robes on. I mean, that, nobody He does. He does look like an Arbiter, yes. That's the he thing. He looks like yeah. a homeless Arbiter. A homeless <laughs> Arbiter. Okay, anyways. What? Yeah, let's what? try going back to that bus stop and maybe ask around from there. See if anybody's seen him. And, if he's uh, not there. Mm-hmm. The, the limo driver's over there, too. At least if he didn't get any jobs that drove him to a different location. Mm -hmm. Yeah, limo driver's not there. That's fine. Do we see a homeless person? Or you do an not. Arbiter person? <laughs> you do or see both? an arbiter person, yes. Is it Fenris? Yes, it is Fenris. Okay. <laughs> oh, hey, there. Fenris, sorry. We uh, lost track of time. Oh, there you are. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Well, I have some bad news, and then I have some worse news. Bad news is... Actually, it's all just kind of the same news, really. Oh, boy. I want to talk about that one Arbiter we saw at the warehouse with a friend of mine, and it's a dead end. Why is it a dead end? I can scry on him. I scryed on him last night. He's talking with some shady people or something like that, but um, nobody I don't know who he is. My contact doesn't know who he is. I thought when you said that you meant that your friend was dead and this was going to get into like super crime show territory. No, no. <laughs> No, just that my contact is unable to figure out who this person is. So that necklace that you wear that says that would prevent you from being scried upon, that's not an arbiter everyone wears? No, it is not. Okay. <clears throat> but he's doing questionable stuff while pretending to be an arbiter, so you think. He was talking with a halfling. Something about expanding territory. And they were in this really nice office, too. Oh. So something about the conglomerate, even. They were even talking about the, going into the conglomerate. Huh. Troubling, indeed. Unfortunately, I do not exactly have that much scrawling power. And, again, you know, it takes a while to... It takes a while for me to regain my, my scrying capabilities. And by that time, I couldn't find him anymore. Didn't I didn't learn his name at all. I just go went off his appearance, so he probably went, you know, took off his disguise and went to sleep. <clears throat> well, we have some good news and some slightly decent news. They're kind of the same deal. What's the good news? The good news is we got some of the drugs sold. So, we're, we're partially there. What's the decent Very news? Partially. Twelve. <laughs> the, the decent news is that Crom is tapped into his magic potential due to the drugs. Hmm. And Crom will cast press the digitation and wave around a little magical butterfly. Ah, about time you nailed that pr spell down. Might have to just pull you as my apprentice after all. Lucy kind of opens up her hand and has the butterfly too. Is like, yeah, I've been doing that this whole time. Like, okay. I mean, if you <laughs> want to be a an apprentice. Yeah, but you said your training equipment so far away. Well, my training equipment, as in the one that belongs to me personally. 
but there are arbiter there are arbiter outposts throughout the continent. Mm. We do have a training facility in Macadia. Not at the academy specifically, but we do have a training facility in Macadia. Also, uh, in other news, uh, we are down a person as uh, Murdoch got a little too hammered last night and not in the dwarf fortress kind. Well, that's Hammer beard indeed. Well, that's not good. Mm. So he's currently resting. Yeah, so we can't be too far out of this area until he's well rested. But we have found another lead for where else we can take the goods. And that's some sort of, uh, what, what was it called? Kind of like a nightclub? It was, it was a nightclub called the Astro Crag. The Astro Crag. Sornots looked it up earlier. They, uh, you said what? It was an Outlander still territory, so mm -hmm. it's uh, it's actually just like a mile from here. So that's like a what, ten minute walk? Yeah, ten to fifteen minutes. A little harder for me, but you know, <laughs> crash got, got my moped ran over, so you know, can only do so much with that. He looks, he looks kind of salty for a moment because, like, everyone else has their little butterflies. Like, oh, my little freaking moped. <laughs> you think that's fun? Watch this, and all of a sudden, you can't see me anymore. <laughs> yeah, no, I. He, he just. <clears throat> oh, that's funny. Someone else has learned invisibility. Kron just Kron just <laughs> cast press the digitation again. <laughs> <laughs> is that all he's gonna be doing? He's... The only problem is I have to you know uh, and then I go ahead and I just call it back off and see it's like the only problem is it's like every time I rest I can do it but I can't just keep doing it. So if there's any place we need to be for an hour Preferably less than an hour. I, I can do that. Just as an idea, if we end up needing, or if we end up getting in trouble or something. Well. Yes. It will definitely come in handy, probably, as we do indeed. Let's let's go check out this nightclub. Yes. And indeed, you easily find the place using Google Maps. <laughs> this and episode is sponsored by Google Maps. <laughs> it, the the club is closed. Yeah. Just scope out around the place. Yeah, it has a bright neon sign of a mountain, and it's not lit up, but you can tell from the color of the glass that it's a purple and red blend of colors are we able to, is there any staff around like maybe the bars trying to get stuff set up for tonight no i mean look but it's like 7 30 in the morning or something like that and probably opens at 7 30 p.m earliest Who knows? yeah but sometimes there's still like uh delivery trucks and stuff bringing in the booze sure. that early sure, in the sure. morning just so sure they enough. can get set up and cleaned up from last the night before and all that but sure you were enough. saying you do see that there are business hours posted on the glass doors that lead into the club itself sort of not takes a picture of the business hours it opens at four in the afternoon and it runs until... And it like runs until 
three o'clock in the morning. Okay. Is there any uh, daily time variance or? Nope. All right. We're all in the same time zone. Why would there be a time variance? Well, some. <laughs> uh, he's talking oh, about the days. days. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It's like, on the weekends, it's open from 4 p.m. to 7 a.m. or some like BS like that. <laughs> okay, I I misunderstood the question there. All right. Yeah, no, I worded it weird. Hey, while you have your phone out, what time is it now, actually? Checks time. Nine o'clock. Mm -hmm. So we've oh. got five. So we've got seven hours. hours. Seven? Oh yeah, that's how time works. <laughs> time no, I mean if you no. want to cast haste on the clock in the world I mean you could probably no, reduce it to no, 5 no. hours No <laughs> it's 9 it's 9 a.m. and 10 11 12 shit you're right I can't math I prom I I can math I promise maybe Okay <laughs> so, I'll, I'll I'll take your word for it I math No good. no 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 you're right so, 7 is right Yeah <laughs> So you have seven hours to kill. There's mm. facilities on campus. There's places to eat. Uh, you could try sneaking into one of the lecture halls. Mm. But you actually see... Before you go off, you actually see Fenris just kind of staring intently into the... Into the uh, club. Fen Fenris, do you think that is where the business room is? No, that's the main room, but I do know how I could find out. Just, uh... Let me just slip into this alley over here. Mm -hmm. And you see him walk into this nearby alley. Yeah, and after he does, Sornok kind of just sits down. And right. right in front of the door, you see kind of a, a silvery mist pop up for just a brief moment. Uh, Sornok gets up and then walks over to the door. And you see silvery mist appear inside the main enter the main room. That you can see within uh, from the glass doors. Hmm. Do we have to do an Arcana check, or would I know what spell that is? You could do an Arcana check. Yeah, yeah he's doing Misty Step. Yeah, he is. <laughs> yeah, he. You know, Fenris basically went invisible and then did Misty Step to basically break into the club. Sorna has no clue what's happening. I just told you what happened. Oh, if you said that out loud. Then... Oh, yeah, yeah. 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 Like I mean, not, like, loud that people could overhear it, but you're right next to me, so... Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, magic's a fun thing, ain't it? Mm. My moped was fun, too. <laughs> yeah, shouldn't you be able to uh, have that repaired by now? I mean, it's all the way. Know, no, it's up north, though. Smithereens. Into smithereens, it was made. It'll probably so be fixed. So you're saying we'd have to go all the way back to the campsite where, or wherever the pieces are, before he mm -hmm. has a moped again? Yes. Oh, jeez. When you the way you <laughs> described it, I thought you were saying it as in it was completely destroyed to a not being fixed state. Otherwise, I would have brought the pieces along. It was not practical to, you know, carry it around though. It right. was I, one of your I one of your family. Yeah, one of your family has would've, it though. Like, all right, as like I would have, uh, I would have like gotten a cart or something. Be like, I'll uh, cart this. They're <laughs> they're. They're trying to fix out the dents and whatnot in the system. Mm -hmm. Not the system, but the bike. Um, Sornot texts his Uncle Vinny 
to ask about how the car troubles are going. Eh, the car troubles are fine. The hmm. bike, the bike's body, you know, had quite a few dents in it on account of you know it being ran over by a bus. Uh, <laughs> basically, had to repair. It, it, it's getting quite a lot of work. We're hammering out what we can, replacing what we can't, what we can't hammer out. And then just, you know, praying to the old gods that things work out in the end. <laughs> Don't worry, nephew. Your old Uncle Vinny's got this sorted. Thank, thank you, Uncle Vinny. I thought Vinny was a cousin. <laughs> no, no. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I got the joke she was making. That's, a, that's, an, yeah, old no, no. That, that's an old movie. I, I get both. I get both. Fucking Joe Pesci. Legendary man. <laughs> Do you? <laughs> hmm. But yes. Thank, thank you, Uncle. Uh, text text me when it's done, or give me a call. Yeah, no thank problem. You. Hangs up the phone and then uh, just kind of chills around, chills around. Not exact, not right in front of the door, but like close by, just to see what's gonna happen next. You see, you see a you see a puff of silvery smoke emerge from the main room of the club that you can see and then a puff of silvery smoke appears right in front of you ah. and then Fenris appears as well ah. <laughs> okay I think I had them get the message oh, okay. and you see a bunch of you see these two big burly humans as well as an orc come running into the main room from some hallway to the right. Uh, sh should should we be running? No, no, no. It's fine. <clears throat> that no, you while see you were in there, I should have told you to put us on a list in case it's one of those types of nightclubs. <laughs> Just be sure you have the goods ready. <clears throat> He holds up the suitcase. And Didn't the Ron orc... Did have it last, or did you... Oh, no, you probably No, no, I, I... I held on to it the whole time. I was not giving someone that was going to be taking drugs and being surrounded <laughs> by five women at once the case of drugs. <laughs> Better well. There... You... <laughs> you have, uh... You see the orc pull out some keys, start fiddling with the locks on the doors, and he opens them up. Uh, can I, could I help you? Can I, uh, can I help you? He looks at you puzzlingly. He, you can see I'm he's, okay. you, you can see well, he has a kind of a look of being miffed on his face. I asked kind of quietly, kind of sneaky like. It's like, does the name Kyle mean anything to you? Kyle? Oh. I know many Kyles. What Kyle are you talking about? Does I think name... he also went by, what was it, Prim? That was in a dream sequence. Does the... What's the Prim part of dream sequence? I thought that was beforehand. <clears throat> nope, it was dream uh, sequence. Sornot oh, looks and is like a... <clears throat> Does uh does the name Outlander mean anything to you? Same kind of like quieted tone. Who's asking? Someone that works for Outlander. Okay, what does he want? Just a special shipment. Kind of nudges, like looks to the briefcase. Mmm, that kind of special shipment. Mm -hmm. All right, come in, come in. Sora not enters. All right. Does the rest of the party follow him? Well, yeah, Kron and Fenris would. Yeah. I mean, I've already uh, let my appearance be shown, so. And it's like, no, Lucy runs off on her own adventure. <laughs> to find my patron bye bye <laughs> <laughs> okay well, this, so 
<laughs> you go into the main room and you're so you're kind of amazed how you didn't see the thirty or so foot stage, as they call it, where it do it does look like a mountain and it has several ledges where you would be seeing strippers during a show. So there's poles there too. Some of them have poles. Hmm. And <laughs> yeah, no, you, you, you take a look at the catwalk that's in front of the Astro Crag, and you, as you go to get up onto it, you break a nail. I love how that it was a 1 and a 20 right after it. The worst type of luck. I'm just curious what happened to the other one. Yep, she Whoa. breaks a nail. Critically breaks a nail, though. Hey, it look. was a hangnail, too. That's oh, works. God. No, not again. Why would you do this? <laughs> no. Why is it all the hangnails? Why? Especially on a tooth. That, that was always the best one. <laughs> But yeah, you you failed to do a good performance. And the orc the orc looks at you, the burly humans look at you, Fenris looks at you, Kron looks at you, and Sorna looks at you. There's disappointment I on their faces. I, I just I went full red. If you can't handle an audience looking at you when you fail, you don't deserve to be on that stage anyway. Now. Yeah, you're right. I just I I saw things and I wanted to try it and I'm sorry. Damn right, you better be sorry. If you had broken that pole with your tomfoolery, that would have cost me money. Hey, hey. It's, now, it's okay. about that special shipment. Mm -hmm. We have a VIP lounge. Of course, of course. Inside the crag itself. Ooh. Mm -hmm. Sounds fancy. It is. Okay, so... And he points to a hallway that's near the crag. It would be like if you're facing the crag from the front where the catwalk is, it's to the right of the crag. He points to the hallway there, and he goes, That hallway leads into a ladder, and that ladder down leads to the VIP room inside the crag. You can do your business in there. Well, while we're standing here, do any of you want some of this shipment? Uh, Special prices for your hospitality, of course. I was about to say, where I should be getting my cut. Of course, of course. Outlander. Just take this as a... Take, take the discount as a sign of respect, and of course get one on the house as long as you're purchasing. Outlander gave me 1,000 credits for my cut. Mm. Are you returning any in form of LS Wheat instead? I would like my 1,000 credits. He did not give us the 1,000 credits. Well then, I guess you're gonna have to make 1,000 credits tonight. Or whenever you're selling. Mm. Hmm. Okay. Now, this here, he points to the big, burly, light-skinned human. This here is Manuel. He will be guarding the room to the Astro Crag. Of course. And then this... He points to the Ascarit, other light-skinned human. This is Richard. Alright, he'll be bodyguarding inside the room with you. Mm. Now. Thank you for this assistance. No problem. Get your stuff set up in there if you want. Alright. And 
just just don't don't try any funny business, okay? There's nothing <coughs> funny about a good time. <laughs> he leaves to go off to that hallway to the right of the entrance. Alright. And you can see there's the main room has a nice marble floor. Beautiful marble tables. Polished leather padded seats. The bar itself is very fancy. There's just rows of neon light neon lighted neon lighted shelves. That have no, no. I think I think they're wooded. Lidded? They're yes. lit. Yeah. <laughs> they're just lined with various bottles of alcohol. Mm. And you can see behind the bar, there is an entrance to a kitchen. And then, of course, there's the bathrooms. Alright, well, go ahead and, uh, take the supply down, and, uh, he looks at her, he looks at everyone and is like, hmm, do any of us actually dress nicely? I do. Do you feel comfortable selling drugs? No, but if you want, I can make you look a little bit more presentable if you want. I don't know if uh, cleaning myself off. Sure, sure, we can try that. Uh, and then no looks at Fenris. <laughs> Never mind. All right. So, looks Fen like Fenris, Fenris looks at you incredulously like, what? <laughs> <laughs> These Arbiter robes are very stylish. Thank you very much. That's just not <laughs> what I was commenting on. <laughs> <laughs> and elves plus he's an elf he's he's hot yeah. yes. <laughs> he's hot and he's he's hot <laughs> Fenris <laughs> do you feel comfortable selling drugs I could sell drugs just tell me what price we need to pay alright well if we owe him a thousand credits and oh. Outlander we owe him eight thousand credits in okay. total, we need to make 9,000 credits now? We already have 460. Our total supply was 400, and the base price is technically 20. So, we are going to tell people that we, are, that we should be selling for 70, but we are going to sell at 40 or 50. I am not completely sure yet, but we need to do one of the two. Well... Um... I know or... from the other place, Percival, he told us Kyle used to charge us 50. Mm -hmm. Or charge him 50. Mm -hmm. So I don't really want to say we're charging 70. But for... did you... I, I... No, no, no. That was just... he, he wouldn't That's... know that. He wouldn't That's... know it, actually. Uh, what, the art of the haggle? Uh... Uh, Sornout would not know that uh, Percy mentioned the fact that he was supposed to charge 70, but, like, he's like, oh, you know, I should be charging 70, but I'll charge you guys 50. Like, it's a wink-wink, nudge-nudge. Yeah, the art of the haggle. Yeah, but... yeah, the art of the haggle. Yeah, but if they already paid 50 anyways, they'll just be going, wait a minute. <laughs> it's like, that's what we usually pay. Well, how about this? Unless uh, that was a college town, and... Maybe Kyle used to charge them more in the more mm. fancier places he was at. Mm. Well, I mean, this is still like college. You're still in the college town. It's only a mile down the road. Fancy nightclub for college town, but all right. Well, hey, college students like to party. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I mean, I'm... yeah, but most of the time it's toga. Toga. Hey, not they can get away with going to a fancy nightclub. <laughs> Why go to some asshole's toga party when you can, you know, party with loud music and have so much drugs be involved and 
you know, generally far less boring. <laughs> All right. So, so yeah, it's like, how about All we right. sell it for thirty-five credits, a a dose. Okay. So we get. The 8,000 no matter what, as long as we sell at 20. Okay, so that would get us 500 for ourselves afterwards, if I am doing correct mm. statements. No, 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 that would get us a lot more. Never mind, yeah, that's fine. I should not have deleted that cal calculator app on my phone. Ha. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. I have it on my real phone, by the way. So, <laughs> just so do... Do we want to uh, get you like a tuxedo or something nice, something snazzy? Yes, your arbiter robes are fashionable, but if they know what that uh, position and power means, they may feel mm. deterred. Let me see if I have something in my spellbook to help with that. Mm. No, I do not. That's quite unfortunate. Well, we have 460 credits. We can go look for a tuxedo rental place. I think in a college town. I think I'll just, uh... I think I'll just use my naturally elven charms. Well, what about Andrew? He does rental services for, well, a limo. I guess he would know a tux rent rental place. <laughs> I don't know. You guys can text Andrew. It's only, it's only 9.30 now. You guys have seven hours. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. As long as it doesn't have to be fitted, I'm pretty sure magic beings can fit a tuxedo within seven hours. Sornot texts uh, Andrew. It's like, hey, it's uh, <laughs> hey, it's a uh, good old uh, Sornot. Uh, our buddy uh, Murdoch was able to get you some uh, get you some business the other night, I assume. And uh, I was actually curious if you knew a tuxedo place in the nearby college town area. After about ten minutes or so, you get a response. Now, sorry, no, no tuxedo places, but. You know, there you could probably do some uh, fancy casual at one of the clothing stores. All right, so text back. He texts back, "Thank you," and then he goes on. Sornak goes online and looks up what is the latest fashion for angsty teenagers. Angsty teenagers, you see a lot of. You see uh, trilbies. Thick rimmed glasses, uh, flannel, tight skinny jeans. Saves uh, saves the flannel shirt, saves a few pictures of different trilbies, and then searches uh, party attire for teenagers. You see... For teenagers, oh boy. Party attire, you just you just see what looks like normal day clothes, except some. There are some suits among there too. All right. Nothing that's I've a tuxedo. It. Right. But right. a I've, suit. I, I, I've got it. Okay, so we get him a flannel shirt, a tie, a trilby hat, and black slacks. To go with his copper skin, I mean that color palette just does not work. Well, Fenris looks at you. you Fenris, <laughs> Fenris is, has a puzzled look on his face. Hey, hey, I'm not, I'm not the fashion expert here, apparently. <laughs> but you well, know, how about we? Flannel is not a bad color. It's, I don't know how people can wear flannel. Okay, it's ugly and plaid. I wouldn't. Back in my day. You know, teenagers, not even the seasoned adventurers would be caught wearing colors as dead, you know, caught dead wearing colors like that. Mm. <laughs> it's the popular thing, apparently. Eh. Yeah. I. What was the other things that you saw? Suits or whatever? 
well, it's like a business casual kind of style. Like, get every part of a suit except for the except for the top. Hmm. A blazer. My, yes. Okay. Every every part of the suit except for the jacket. Although you know, sex sells if you want to completely go without the top, but. Uh, mm. <laughs> that I mean, could I could put my old charms to use. How how toned are you? I know that you have that copper skin tone, but does that uh, continue uh, lower? We can we can raise the price higher if we're going to put less clothing on you. While I'm not exactly a stripper, um, guys, so I, I hate to point out. this out, but this is a nightclub with holes. I don't think it's necessarily a mail order type nightclub. Hey. Or in, hey, it's a uh, w- state's year that this game is currently in. It's twenty. It's twenty fifteen. Let's right, make it twenty fifteen. Hey, <laughs> it's twenty fifteen. Orientation isn't something you judge. No, but male strip clubs don't necessarily have poles, but women's strip clubs do. Hey. Eh. I mean, everybody, everybody does. Although you saw how well I did on the catwalk, so obviously I can't perform. But <laughs> you know what? Here, let me show me some more. Here, show me some pictures of uh those fashions that you were looking up. Right, uh, Sora, turns to you, Sora. Not Sora. Not pulls up like different pictures of like business casual, mostly uh one color or two color, uh slacks and uh matching uh shirts oh wait look at that he he points to a guy wearing a suit and it's it's a human so he has kind of long hair but it's mm-hmm. tied down and okay. Fenris you see you can if you look at Fenris's eyes you can see that an idea sparks so we should go shopping then I think we should. Let's see, I'll need a hair tie. And then... That. He just waves his finger up and down on the picture. Or over the picture. Just that. Alright, um... He looks up, uh... The different stores on the college campus and uh, tries to look for what would be the closest to, like, a business casual store. Well, you have the Yap. <laughs> you have the old Admiral. <laughs> you have Clothes R Us. <laughs> Just Clothes R Us. That sounds like an outlet store. Macy <laughs> Macy Pennies. All right, I'm I'm done. Let's just go. <laughs> and obviously, Sears. Of all the ones that you don't change, yeah, because Sears also means to burn. Yes. Very. Meanwhile, a mace is a medieval weapon, and I like it. Yes. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> okay. So let's start at the old admiral. You go to the old admiral. It's located. It's about a. It's about an eight minute walk, you know, a couple blocks away. Bad. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, actually, one second. Sorry, he looks at Chrono. He's like, "You watch the supply here, and uh, here." Uh, Sorna gives Kron his phone, and he says, Text Lucy if there is any trouble. Uh, yes. And uh, I'm assuming you do know how to text, right, Kron? I do know how to text, yes. Okay. I was not born yesterday. Well, probably to you, I was born yesterday, but I was not born yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> 
Again, we found you in the woods attacking us. I have no idea what kind of technological technological knowledge you know. Hey, that is racist. We had smartphones. <laughs> All right. So, so yeah, it's like uh, and then then uh, Kron, sorry, then uh, Sorna pulls Kron closer and was like, "She saved in the phone as uh, slightly bitchy. Just be careful." Click the right uh, one. Okay. Yes. Yes. Can you have a perception check to see that? <laughs> to, you could do a perception check to hear it. Ah! Uh, oh shit! <laughs> well, I had time for the twenty, but I'm yep, sorry. You... What? <laughs> hey, hey! I only say what's partially true. I mean, it yeah, is that's right. I just have you under as short green dude. Hey, <laughs> it's right. <laughs> He, he all right, all right, all right. Short and green. All right, children. All right, let's. Come on now. We're not in eight, we're not in you know, high school anymore. Come on. Hey, technically we are until like three days from now. No, you've graduated. Shit. <laughs> oh, that was three days. I go. All right, all right. Let's let's uh let's let's go to the old admiral. Yeah, and before we go to the old admiral, I'll be right back because I need to bathroom. Yes, yes. Of course, of all times that you get the 20. <laughs> <laughs> well, I got it in the performance just the second time, not the first time. If there was an advantage on it, I would have totally dominated that. <laughs> yeah, fair enough, fair enough. Like I said, it's a nightclub. And if I scored, like, really well, one of the things was, like, hey, how about I just be in the front, you know, room right off the bat? And I was like, eh, maybe I don't want to do that. Fair enough. And then it kind of spoke for me where I managed to get a hangnail so, dub. Yeah. Somehow. <laughs> somehow. By walking, I broke a nail. Yep. Oops. Oops. So another thing I can do now is uh, I can remove my mask and uh, blow up a little bit. Well, that sounds interesting. Mm. Well, physically or mentally? Like, are we going to see a brain explosion? Physically, kind of, I think. I just... I big radiant light that hurts me as well as anything around me. Ah. Interesting. Interesting. Alright, so. You all do indeed go to the old admiral and it's nice. It's got shelves lined with cl clothes, polo shirts. And in the back... Uh, you know, polo shirts, khakis, jeans, t-shirts, what have you. In the back is where they start getting to the fancier stuff. The slacks, the blazers, the vests. Mm -hmm. You see two counters open. One is helmed by a, a gnome girl. And the other is... Captained by a, nah. <laughs> Screw it. Let's let's make it a female dragonborn. I know it's a nautical theme there. The All helm right, of the register old... was captained by. I know. Apparently, I'm not too good at this uh, fashion thing. So if uh, you want to. Look around. I we we have what we're looking for, but we might not exactly find it. So that might be well, out of the price range. Well, happen to know what size you are? I mean, I know you've worn your rose for how long, but do you know your size? I'll be able to find it. Just uh, excuse me, Miss. Fenris calls over the gnome girl. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What do you want? Mm hmm. Oh yes, you see, I am. Um... These robes are just not doing it for me, you know. It's a terrible, terrible thing. 
and I was hoping you could find me a style that was more along the lines like this. And you see him produce a small illusion of basically the photo that you show mm. that he uh, had you gaze upon. Right. So or not. And with him instead of the other dude. Ah. Oh, yeah. Oh, and also it's a white color. Just to keep going with Fenris's white theme. Yes. <laughs> and Don't for some worry, odd reason, the bronze. the blazer is a long coat. Instead of just, you know, the usual short blazer. Of course. <laughs> Does it have tails on the end, too? I mean, my goodness. It's not a tail coat, no. It's just an actual coat. <laughs> I don't, I don't think we have enough money for a pocket watch, Fenris. <laughs> a pocket watch? Oh, dear. I don't need to know a pocket watch. I'm an elf. <sighs> By the time I looked at my pocket watch, it would already, already be a minute over. <sighs> anyway, <sighs> yes, that's what I'm looking for. Do you have it? Um, we might have it. We just got a shipment today of stuff, but we also might not have it. And, <laughs> that, you know, that would be kind of bad. But, you know, we might have it. Alright, well, what, where would we find this? Oh, yeah, you want the back, and somewhere in the back, uh, Sarah's the one that did the, the truck today. She may have put it to the, the she may have put it in the kids section. I don't, I don't know. Kids section? <laughs> Is there she, one of those help uh, towers that you can just type in the information that you're looking for in the store and it tells you where it's at. There is not. God. <laughs> Sarnot immediately walks over to the kids section because he knows this is a human store so he might find something that fits him in the kids section. <laughs> <laughs> you do indeed find stuff that fits you in the kids section. He, it's also, called... looks, he also looks for the, the suit that she mentioned like the and, and what about you? She looks at Lucy. I'm fine with my personal style. I'm just here helping my friend. Oh, really? Oh, they're all getting yeah. fancy and you're not getting fancy? Ooh. Can't fight. <laughs> yeah, that's what I want to do. I want to fight in the middle of a uh, department store. Hey, I mean, look, we could get the quest for free. Yeah, there's still a dragon board and you'd have to worry about, plus any customers that might defend them. I'm <laughs> Listen, 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 listen. Ariel, the female dragonborn, speaks up. Ah, uh, don't, don't, don't mind her, okay? Just, you know, she's a gnome. But, are you Sarah that unloaded the truck, or are you somebody else? Oh, no. My name is Thraxy. I'm sorry, what? Thraxy. F-A-X-I? T-H-R-A-X-I. Oh, okay. Thank you. Uh... Well, would you be able to help us, or is Sarah the person that we're looking for? Because they no, say I that could... there might be a shipment. I can try to help. I mean, I see your friends already... Your friends are already browsing, but... Yeah, we could... Yeah. I could try to help. Ariel, just don't offend anyone else. Oh, don't worry, I don't offend people. Well, I sometimes offend people. <laughs> Maybe... I'm I'm just kind of st sitting there with like a mm -hmm. yeah okay <laughs> and Thraxy you know starts she goes to the back as well to help Fenris and Sornot find clothes. I mean Sornot's mostly looking in the kids section to see if uh, this uh, gnome chick was right in saying that his that Fenris's suit somehow ended up in the kids' section. <laughs> you know what? Roll me a perception. Alright. Let's see. Let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. 
I can tell you that I it is going to be a roll <laughs> that I can't of a tell you. D twenty plus two plus whatever your wisdom modifier is? Yes. Aww. Yeah, no, you don't find it there. Fair enough. Worth a shot. <laughs> and it's about half an hour later, so or not, you do manage to find the kids. What they have, it's called the kids suave section. Ah, uh, hell yeah. Full of nice <laughs> suits that are basically like big boy suits, except they're for kids <laughs> and smaller creatures. He looks for one that doesn't have animal patterns on it. There there are plenty that are just solid colors. Just making sure. <laughs> a big old dinosaur on the corner. One of those brontosaurs. Yeah, there's a, make, there's make... a Barney one. <laughs> this is when Sornot wishes he had fire magic so he could burn that thing and forget it ever existed. <laughs> hmm. But yes, you and dinosaurs. disturbing. Yes, after half an hour, you and Fenris did indeed find everything you were looking for. And yeah, that was the fun part of going to a register and finding out a way to pay for it. We have four sixty, and then we have whatever gold that we also have on us, or sorry, whatever credits we also have on us. All right, well, oh. let's see how much this is worth. And Thraxy rings it up, and it all comes to a total of 350 credits. Boom! Alright, put some money, put uh, the 350 down for her. Hmm. Thank you very much, and, you know, come again if you ever need anything else fancy. Hey, can you guys do me a favor, and I'm telling uh, at least Soronaut this by message. Uh... Don't take the tags off. Maybe we can return it later. Don't do it via text because then Kron's going to get it. No, no, no. Message. Message. I, I have oh, okay, okay. She has a spell. Uh, yeah. Um, Sornot nods. And then I'll also tell it to Fenris and Kron because I don't think I can do all three at the same time. So. No, Fenris kinda... responds with, but I like this long coat. It feels in the fancy. <laughs> Dude, I think you're the 300 part of that. <laughs> I mean, I don't imagine Sarnot and Kron's, you know, no we offense, small size Kron. would cost that much. Wait, we you guys actually got stuff for Kron? Kron? No. Oh, didn't you? I thought Kron and Sarnot no. both got clothes. No, no, no. no. Oh, so Kron it's just isn't Sarnot. with us. Oh, okay. No, no, no. Kron's at the club and he's in his armor. So Yeah, no. Okay. Kron's going to... Kron and Lucy are going to be our backup. <laughs> Kron's there to look scary. I know, right? Hey, if you don't like my appearance, I can simply become invisible for at least the hour. Hey. With, <laughs> hey, with that mask, you look kind of terrifying. I'm the green one here. You want me to take off my mask? I don't think you'll like it. That's the point. You won't like what happens if I take this mask off. I'm Is that pretty because sure. I'm ugly under here. I'm pretty sure that is the point. Don't make me have to take this mask off in the middle of this department store. You're not going to like the result. <laughs> oh, it's... Don't, don't, hold why... on, hold the fuck up. Hold the fuck up. <laughs> is your... Do you go full Cyclops with your radiant burst? Is the, pretty is much. The, you is remove the... the mask and it kind of... Yeah. Oh, Jesus and... Christ, it's a terrible weakness. <laughs> and and that's he... why you are keeping the mask on and being terrifying yeah, exactly. as one of our bodyguards and not as one of the people's self. Point being, let's go. Let's, let's, yeah, let's yeah, go. yeah. <laughs> okay, I thought you were just insulting me. All right. No, 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 no. Yeah, okay, so you're, you know, back to the club now. Kron did indeed keep his word and guard the goods and Mardok and... is still uh, passed out at Percy's I mean you can message Percy passed out at Percy's the new game series 
Oh God, no! Please, yeah, no. I we just uh, need message that. Percy real quick and say, "Hey, how's Murdoch doing over there?" Uh, Percy replies, "He's stable. You know, he's recovering quickly. He's a dwarf. I'm gonna let him recover. And where are you guys at?" Uh, well, we're about to head out to that um, Astro Crag thing. I think that's where we're headed, right? Yeah. Or was there another? No, no, no. You're back. You're back. Beforehand. You're back at the Astro oh, okay. Crag. Okay. Yeah, we're at the Astro Crag thing. Oh, okay. Uh, you, how'd you get in? Um, uh, we have our ways. I th think think I could get in. I've always wanted to go into the Astro Crag. Not right now. Is uh, sort of probably over your shoulder. Whether or not you realize it, like he's standing <laughs> up on a seat, and it's like. You probably want to say not right now. Okay, even if you are up on your toes, you still can look over my shoulder without like, he's hanging here. off of me. He's if on like the are, he's on the back of like sitting, a seat. Yeah, no, I'm on the back of like a bar stool. Oh, okay, and you're probably also sitting down. We're probably sitting down at like a bar or a table or something. It's like standing on the seat, looking over your shoulder. Hmm. It's like yeah, I think right now it's best for you just to keep an eye on Murdoch, and he doesn't like choke on his own tongue or something while he's passed out. Alright, will do. Uh, just, you know, message me if you need me. Yeah. Will do. And okay. unless you guys want to do something else, we can fast forward to the night. Just get a thing of nachos or whatever they have to offer for food at the bar. The cooks are not there. <laughs> hey, uh, does still? Does the... I mean, it's like how many hours? But all right, fine. Does, uh, there, there's only been like an hour. Yeah, but you want to fast track? I mean, before we completely fast track to the part where we're selling them. Oh, okay. Yeah. Just does, does something does to the... eat. I mean, we've got how many hours without eating anything except for. Well, I might still have a lunch bowl or two. Does, does the Baco Bell deliver here? The Baco Bell? <laughs> <laughs> it is, it's still called a Taco Bell. And Taco Bell does deliver, yes. Yes. He gets like a one of those like $5 crunch boxes or whatever. <laughs> Fenris eats dried red berries from his trail rations. Aww. Oh, he's used to it. But yeah, he does look spiffy as hell. A nice, good old blend of a white suit with a white long coat. His hair has been tied back. Or not tied back, but tied down. We get like one of those uh, photo shoot scenes where it's... Uh... Sornai and Fenris stepping out of the dressing room simultaneously. And it's focused on Fenris, so we only see Sornai when he hops up. <laughs> <laughs> He's waving his hands in the air whenever he hops up. Yes. <laughs> it's like, he looks really nice, but it also looks really stupid because he's hopping and waving his arms like a madman. And also Fenris is hiding his Arbiter Blade underneath his coat. Okay. I will be right back. Okay. So let's see. Kron will... Hmm. What does Kron have to eat? Kron doesn't have shit. He'll have some beef jerky. Hmm. So how much was the order of nachos that I ordered from the actual bar? Five bucks. Or five credits. Okay. So I adjust my wallet here. There we go. And now we play the waiting game. Mm -hmm. it... Wonder why I didn't pick up modern fashion earlier. This is actually kind of a fancy suit. Would you say it's more comfortable though? Oh, definitely not. No, my robes are far better. But this doesn't not this doesn't look too bad. Out of character. He does wear stuff under the robe, right? Yeah. 
I mean, if he's still wearing the classic stuff, I don't know. They had pantaloons, I guess, as far as underwear went. Yes, he has pantaloons. <laughs> Although I do admit, I do like the coat. The coat feels nice. You still have your robes, though. If you... Yeah, yeah, Fenner says his robes. And then she looks down at her own outfit. It's like, is it really that bad? I mean, should I have gotten something, too? I mean, it's not spiffy. You don't look like you're going out for a night on the town. You just, you just look like you're going for a night out. Well, what's wrong with that? Hmm? What was wrong with my Arbiter robes? Well, we just didn't want you to look like an Arbiter selling these supplies. Yeah, fair point. I don't know why Saranod decided he also needed clothing, too, but, you know. Backup points, backup points. Oh, are you back? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> backup points, that's, that's, that's all. Also, kind of need a suit if I'm ever going to do an interview, so, you know. Also, can now. I just press a digitation some like sparkles on my shirt if I wanted to? Like you'd sequence? you'd have to hold the concentration for that too. Oh. Well, not the okay. concentration, but you know, it's it's. You'd have to keep it up basically. Every ten minutes yeah. or so, you'd have to repress the digitate the sparkles. Okay, I guess it's not worth it then. But yes, it is now the big night. You guys have had your food. And as you're waiting in the inside the Astro Crag private room, there are booths with nice cushioned seats. Not pleather, but some nice soft fabric that covers the padding. And there's ottomans in there. There's a mini bar. And... Sure. I, you can, I got you it, can... I got it. Yeah, Perfect. Yeah. Alright, I know exactly what I'm going to do. So, I, I want us to be set up with the suit, with the case open, sorry, with the case closed, and the one in like one of those like circle booths in the back. Mm-hmm. And then, uh, I want to be at the mini bar as like, as the one mixing drinks, if the person that is already at the mini bar doesn't mind. Oh, there's nobody at the mini bar. Well, then I am at the mini bar mixing drinks. I take one of the bar stools back so I can stand on it. Okay. It's like, now my suit serves a purpose. Fenris and Kron are sitting together. Kron is... He has his pistols out. He's 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 making it plain and simple what he mean that he means business. Sornat's uh, shotgun is hidden, hidden under the bar. And what about you, Lucy? I kind of want to be in a corner where I'm able to see the entire room. Well, it is a circle, so pick anywhere and you can <laughs> see the entire room. Uh, okay, so just like somewhere along the wall then. Okay. Oh, and also I forgot to say that there's a big, you know, support beam in the middle. Because a structure like that needs a big support beam or else it just all goes to hell. Hmm. And you hear the music starting to crank up. You know, there's music by a whole variety of artists. Various Dragonborn, Elven, Tiefling, Asimar, human artists, all sorts of races. A gnome track comes on and you almost get sidetracked because gnome songs are kind of like gnomes themselves, they're disorienting. <laughs> <laughs> Got some and... like uh, Lincoln Park somehow. Yep. In the end, it doesn't even matter. Today is <laughs> gonna be the day. And up the ladder, you do indeed have a small group of kids. Various races. 
and now when you say kids though you mean teenagers college right? college kids and teenagers yeah okay just making sure it's like we're not selling to 12 year olds okay i mean do we sell them to 12 year old uh kobolds that's different and he was six <laughs> <laughs> so exactly these kids are you know these college kids are entering and they look at they look at fenris Hey, uh, hey, we heard we can, uh, get some of the good stuff here. Oh, indeed, you can get some of the good stuff. Fenris kind of sits up. By the way, he has the suitcase, right? Yes. Yeah, he, he has the suitcase like, on an ottoman in front of him. It's closed. Yes. Perfect. They'll open it, turn it around so they can see it. We get mm -hmm. that money shot of them looking at it. Yes. Fenris opens it, and he does indeed turn it around. The college kids smile and nod. All right, so, you know, I, I'm new to this game, and I was told that my predecessor sold these for 80 credits. And the kids get wide-eyed man man that's that's ludicrous okay you can't just 80 credits no 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 we're used to buying for 50 50 oh i was terribly misinformed then oh dear me what will i ever do you know what no how about this i'm so sorry to make you angry how about you simply pay oh how many doses you want well, let's see. They, the college kids, there's about five. There's about, nah, screw, not five of them. There's six of them. They get into a group huddle. 24. Total. And they, the lead college kid, some bratty dwarf, holds out them, you know, a stack of cash. All right. I like your style. I like how you're doing. And so you know what? I am going to offer you for this very rare price. 35 credits a pop. So. I just need a simple bit of you. I actually have to do this math in my head. Okay. 840 credits total. Hmm. Hmm. The cow, you know kids nod they smile they agree and they take the doses or they take the ounces Fenris gets the money and the kids leave it's all about knowing how to cater to them We kind of take this, we kind of take this in, uh, in Arbiter training, you know? It's the art of the haggle. What you do is, you try to set an initial price that's way higher than what the person actually, than what you actually want. And then you make it seem, oh no, oh dearie me, how am I going to, how am I going to deal with this? I can't just, you know, go down so much. But you know what? I like you, blah, blah, blah. Give him a couple compliments. And then you demand your actual price. And they'll eat it up. <coughs> and it goes on this way throughout the night. And at the end of the day, at the end of the night, you actually make, you know, once you're done with all the doses, 15,500 credits. Nice.
And that sold everything, right? That is everything sold. Okay, so that's not just from tonight. That was from whatever we sold yeah. yesterday, the 12. Okay. Oh, so, God. which uh, person were we supposed to give the thousand credits to? Uh, Burly, uh... The Burly, Burly Orc. Orc. Okay. So, not Manuel, it was some other dude, right? No, yeah. Not Manuel, the, no. The, the, the Burly Orc actually didn't give us a name. He that didn't know, but... Orc. Richard probably knows. Richard's in the room there with you, too. Alright. Can we trust Richard enough to have him give him the money, then? I mean, we're gonna... It's like, hey, uh, hmm, Richard, uh, hmm, where yeah. is your uh, boss? Yeah? So that oh. we can give him his cut. Oh, yeah, you want me to summon the boss? Okay. And you see Richard pull a walkie-talkie out from underneath his coat yeah yeah boss uh yeah they got the money for you okay and uh i don't know who wants to actually hear this message i'll i guess i'll say it's a or not but uh do you only want to give him the thousand that he asked for probably right I'm going to have a little bit more on me just in case. Okay. Uh, and then Sornot walks over to the suitcase, which I assume we were putting the money in as we were going. Yeah, yeah. Fenris and has it full like, of the money. And uh, so looks at Fenris is like, he holds up, uh, he holds up two fingers, and then it's like, and then he mouths the word thousand. Fenris nods and indeed <laughs> counts out a thousand credits. And as long as 8,000 gets uh, safely tucked away before anybody sees us with it. Actually, uh, do you want me to take the suitcase, go invisible, and then kind of, like, leave? Uh, he, uh, he looks at uh, Lucy and he's like, no, 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 we should be fine. I just, just nice to have friends with you. Just nice to have friends if we are going to be in this business longer, just just in case. Always nice to uh, make uh, previous arrangements. And of course, if we're done here, we're done here. But right. we don't know how much Outlander is going to uh, keep his word. Hmm. It's very, very pragmatic. Good, good. Getting prepared. So yeah, no, uh, Sor Sornot takes the 2,000 credit. And, uh, he puts them in, like, he puts one in, like, his coat pocket. One, one set in his coat pocket, and then he goes towards where the step ladder down would be. Not, like, right in front of it, obviously, but, you know, like, a few paces off. Yeah. And up from the ladder. Wait, so you wait, your position's still in the room, right? Yes, we're, yeah, we're okay, still in the room. Yeah, okay, okay. Okay. You do indeed see the big burly orc. And you see Manuel. But you also see five other people. Hmm. Two orcs, a halfling, a dragonborn, and a dwarf. Soranot just thinks a moment to himself, God damn, I wish I could use that message spell. <laughs> he just thinks that to himself for a moment. He's like, uh, hey, orc buddy. Hmm, hmm. Me, yeah, I never learned your name, otherwise I'd say that, but, uh... Oh, yeah, me? Oh, yeah, me? Mm. My name is Harrison, okay? That's, that's, uh, <laughs> that's to do business with you, Harrison. Uh, here's your, uh, cut. And, uh, he pulls the... He gives the 1,000 to him. Hmm. 
One thousand. Yep, that's it. Mm. All right. But uh, I don't know. Some uh had to deal with an incident there in the hey, room hey. where someone was using and. I don't know. I mean, maybe I deserve a little bit of extra for making sure that your business stays under wraps. Hey, hey, hey. I was... I, I had a feeling something... Someone would go a little offhand, but, uh... Yeah, we can throw in a little bit extra, but know that this isn't from Outlander. This is from me. My gift to you and he pulled out half of the 1,000 from his coat pocket, and then he hands him the 500. Hmm. 1,500. You see him counted out. Huh. All right, well. You guys look like you know what you're doing after all. Oh, and also, by the way, uh, Mr. Harrison... If uh, you ever threaten us again, and that's when Fenris moves aside his coat to show his blade, and then just smiles, and you see, you see Mr. Harrison kind of get a little bit scared. I'll uh, I'll uh, keep that in mind next time. And he and his cadre of people leave. Harrison doesn't have any wounds on him that a rune blade would have created, does he? What, Harrison? Yeah. Not that you could see. Oh, okay. uh, does does uh, Manuel leave with them? Oh, sorry, whichever Richard or whichever one saved. Ah, uh, no, Richard. Richard, with them? Richard, Richard stays. All right, that's fine. I'm curious. But yeah, he he does uh. He does look at Fenris kind of scared now as well. God damn it, I didn't... Okay, look, you. You need to stop. You need to stop. I did not... I, look, Richard Harrison, yeah, I get it, haha. -ha. I didn't realize that, okay? I just found it funny. I was like, I wonder if he knew. <laughs> no, I didn't know. <laughs> I think that makes it even better, is that you didn't notice. <laughs> All right. So yeah, no, after... Uh, Sor Sorna walks back over and is like, uh, hmm, hmm, that went uh, well. I assume that... Uh, Either that blade is known rather well, or something happened when you entered. Oh no! First time. You haven't, uh, you haven't seen an Arbiter Rune Blade in action before. No, no, no. I have. I don't know how uh, well known the stories of them are, considering how easy it was for us to achieve it for you before. That's that's all I mean to say. Oh, uh, that must that was probably a fluke. I mean that that cashier did seem a little uh yeah. Little out of it. But no, basically Arbiter stories of their rune blades is like a Jedi with their lightsaber. Alright, just just making sure. People know that when a rune blade's in play, a skilled arbiter will cut you. <laughs> right. There is no escaping that. Hey, uh, Richard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What? Uh, just for being so nice and you know, uh, joining us this evening. He uh gives Richard two hundred credits. Oh, oh, thank you. He smiles. Uh, you might if uh you might if we uh, stay here for the night. We don't have a proper lodging, and uh, this is a nice place. If you don't mind us. And I, I I messaged Sarnot. It's like, dude, I want to get out of here, and yeah, we can stay with Percy. 
he retracts his previous statement. It was like, <laughs> it was like, <laughs> well, we do have a place we could stay. It's just, uh, you might, if you, uh, leave us for a moment, we'll make sure to close the door on the way out. Uh, yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, sure. Just let me, uh, he climbs down the ladder and then closes, closes the hatch. All I right. swear, if they locked us in here, I am going to kill you. <laughs> well, that was very nice, dodging of an ambush. No yes. one lost their lives. That's what it means to be an arbiter right there. Hmm. Although I will say, I uh, I do tend to use my blade a lot more than my woods. Yeah. I'm not the biggest man when it comes to speaking finely, but over the course of the past few days... I seem to have become rather proficient in it. It's... That's a <laughs> wink, wink, nudge, nudge at gaining that from Cavalier. Yeah. <laughs> but it was like, uh, hmm. Uh, yes, this has uh, turned out rather nice for us. So we have... Through, we have 5,008... 5,800 credits for us to keep unless we wish to give Outlander any extra. I don't think so, but you gotta remember, he might be watching it. Or whoever he works for. But, you also need to think that he's also been watching Kyle, and he probably only expected Kyle to bring him back 8,000 credits at this much. That's I'm sure... True. I'm sure... He even told us any extra that we get, we keep. Just however we decide to use it. Mm -hmm. And that was also only a verbal agreement. I don't remember getting it in writing. I highly doubt we are going to get anything in writing when it comes to uh, this kind of dealing. So, are we actually staying down here for the night then? Or what are uh, we doing? I... Do not mind where we stay. I just thought I'd get us a private moment away from them. We so could. That we... we can, uh, in case we have any uh, discussion to make beforehand. And of course, if we uh, if we stay here the night, you know, it's not that bad of a place. I'm just saying, if we're staying here the night, that uh, we're taking uh, watches, of course, I of course. don't feel comfortable of all of us sleeping at the same time. I mean, we can go back to. Uh, your boyfriend's place. He laughs for a moment and then... He's not himself. my boyfriend! <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I know. I know. It's, it's just personal. It's like... So... That went rather well. That did go surprisingly well, yes. I honestly thought that they would start blasting people as soon as they all came in here. Yeah, yeah. So now we just need... So how many days... Um, Sorry, out of character. How many days do did we have left for the thing? Cause you have a pretty good two. chunk. I think five days are left. Five, five days sounded right. And uh, we determined it was how long of a walk back to the cabin? Because I think he said... Yeah, a couple yeah. days. Just, just and I... I don't think there's much point in calling the limo and saying, Hey, you remember where you picked us up at? Uh, could you drive us back to there? Because mm. he's right. probably going to start saying, Hey, how about you start paying? <laughs> right. No, I hear it. It's like... And we, we do have some decent spending money, but... Yeah. Plus, we still have to pick up Murdoch, and yeah. he'd probably... I don't know. He, he's more of a wilderness type guy, but he might also want a limo ride. Right? I don't know. Mm -hmm. So, which thing? How he's been a little trigger happy. He he he's been wanting to shoot stuff. I think. Hmm. What we need to do is get him like a first person dwarf fortress. <laughs> I mean, he could just go to you know Degosa. And try to reclaim the old shipwrecked fortress. <laughs> he he t he writes down in his notepad, first person dwarf fortress for real. 
Yeah, see if any of that training has been put to good use. <laughs> this is when we just turn this into a Kingdom Maker campaign. <laughs> good. Yeah. So it was like, <clears throat> so uh, anything else we wish to do on this night? And uh, we can always head back to uh, Percival's. Just, just want to make sure we had a moment to talk if anybody had anything to say about this place and about what happened. No, that was like I said. I thought I would have. I thought I'd have to cut a bitch. Pardon my language. <laughs> I think it went so surprisingly smooth for what I was expecting. Okay, so. Now we talk about keeping the money safe. Just just a quick thought. So we carry it out in this one briefcase, but after that, we are probably going to want to split up the money so that it isn't all found at once. If there's any uh, in-character, it'd probably already be known out of character just asking, like, is there any way to, like, is there, a, like, credit sticks where I could put like 8,000 credits into one stick drive or something or I don't know. Oh no no I know, I know what you mean. put it on a credit card? Yeah like a prepaid like, card. Yeah like a pre yeah okay that's yeah just like put all the 8,000 into like one convenient to carry place so that we have that and uh, put the rest between us that might be that might be drawing some bit of attention if we were to just go to some place and put all you know all that money in at once, that this is this is true. This we is could, true. we could just go to the cabin, count out the eight thousand, keep that in the suitcase, and then split all the money between us. That's like I mean, that is left over. I mean, yes, that that was kind of the idea. Was just seeing if we could keep it not a giant briefcase, but yes, uh. I think for tonight we head back to uh, Percival's. We count out the. M we probably actually let's just count out the money here. We can we can give Murdoch his cut when we get there. Just uh just so we don't cut count the money in front of Percival. Seems a little sketchy sometimes. Can, you, if you want to count out the money? Does. I don't. Uh, you know you, you shouldn't count the money until the dealing's done. You know. Okay, shut up, Kenny Rogers. The, the deal is the deal is done, we and yeah, the deal is yeah, done. We're still in the building. I mean, it's like you know. You want no to just get out of the building? Can <laughs> no when to run? She, hey, she's, 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 she has in character. She has, she does not give a shit about everything else. She wants to go to the run part of wait, that song. Wait. Well, I'm curious. What time is it right now? That's a good question. You look at your phone, and it is one in the morning. Uh, I was going to say, it's like, if This it's room three, has been cleared for two more hours. I mean, they should... Wow. I was going to say, it's like, if, uh... If it was later, I'd just say that we have the whole place to ourselves. But, uh, is the music still blaring and playing and all yep, that? Yep, there's still people. Right. You still hear people dancing and woo to being and... Do we want to stake out until it closes, or... Would that be risking it? You know what? Actually, wait. Can't both of you go invisible or something like that? I can go invisible, I can yes. Go invisible. Do one of you just want to carry the money out? Or do both of you just want to go ahead and go and then me and Kron will work our way out like natural, naturally? Like, just get all the money out of Dodge. Fenris, are you able to miss these stuff from where you're at or are you too far from I can't see outside this room exit. okay I can't and, uh, I, I need to be able to I need to be able to see where I'm going to teleport to okay. and, uh, you may not have good sight out on a dance floor that's dark and uh I'll have illusion I could probably conjure something to help my eyes yes maybe it's just uh one of you, or both of you, go invisible with the money and go. Me and Kron 
look decent enough, and I'm sure we can hide. Actually, do one of you just mind carrying Kron's pistols? Or, I don't think you can carry Kron and make him invisible. I don't know how this spell thing works, but, uh... I, I know I can't have an extra creature yet. I could make him invisible, but not for long. Just... How long do you honestly think it will take to get out of this bar? We, If you can cast it while we're on the ladder, we can just cast it right before going out the door. Hmm, that is true. Yes, I could cast it on him in the hallway, and then it would basically be a blitz to go yeah, to that door. Exactly. What could happen is, I will stay in front. Alright. Lucy, So. go invisible before we go back into the main room, and you will follow behind me. You and Kron will follow behind me. I will move people out of our way. Okay, and I'll just walk out in my suit and be fine. Yes. Okay. Lucy, take my shotgun. I don't think I can hide this on me. Well, I mean, it's kind of one of those worlds where you can openly carry. I don't know if that yeah, it is. I, it. Okay, sorry. This this place doesn't. I wasn't sure if this place had rules against it or something. No, no, they don't. All right. Well, then never mind. Yeah, no, open carry. This is fine. Cause usually it's you know, if you're gonna try to fire on someone, you may kill somebody, but. There's there's several Everybody there's else. several other hundred people there that are gonna open fire on your ass. Yeah. <laughs> all right, just follow me. Like, uh, music, music stops and all of a sudden. Bah, 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 bah. All right, Fenris, you know, opens the hatch, and he, you know, tells Richard that he can go back to his duties. And then you all leave. Again, Fenris reaches the top of the ladder at the opposite end of this hallway to go back into the main club. And he looks at Kron and he goes, All right. Very, very closely. Greater invisibility. And Kron turns invisible as Fenris pats him on the head. <laughs> All right, Lucy, come on. Yep, I just, you know, all of a sudden I'm invisible. And it takes a bit. Fenris, you know, he produces a disorienting light. And by disorienting, I mean it's one color. You know, that would definitely catch someone's attention at a club. It's like, hey, why isn't that changing color? Where's, where's my epilepsy? This... this... <laughs> It's like, this is a rave. Why is that color always on? Yeah. <laughs> and Fenris uses the light. He says, excuse me. Pardon me. Pardon me. Yes, yes. Come on. Make way now. Make way. And you are, you you all managed to make it out of there. Huzzah. <laughs> Oh, I can't use message while also invisible. Okay. All right, there we go. Now, I suggest we get. I suggest we get back. <laughs> so you, we you, take the however long walk back to Percival's. Oh, and also, by the way, yep. you, as you uh, do leave the club, you see Andrew with his limo letting out a few people from his. Well, his limo. Hey, Andy! Andrew! Hey, guys! Thanks so much for getting the word out. Hey, no problem. Uh, do you, do you uh, mind dropping us off by the A block? Uh, sorry, I got a fare. It's all, it's all good, man. All good. Have a nice night, man. You too, man. Thanks. And he drives off in the opposite direction. That he came from. Well, that was worth a shot. Yep. Nah, you yeah, all make it. You made one life better, though. Yeah, what? don't worry. You've all, you've all made it to Percy's apartment or his dorm. It's about Brandon, one. We... It's about one thirty in the morning now. You t I mean, you could have a. You could have a random encounter if you want. Do you want to, no, I don't know, go no. into the alleys? <laughs> no. 
I was like, random encounter. Not while well, we have the money. Let's let us let us worry about that later. <laughs> it was a joke. Suddenly, you have in... the money on us still, right? I mean, we didn't yeah. bump and drop it on the way. Okay. Yeah. <sighs> okay. All right. So we're back at the apartment. Mm -hmm. It's one thirty. It is. Do we? Do does he let us in, or do we have to knock on? Or do we have to break in? Like, what's happening? You don't hear. Into his house. You hey. don't hear anything coming from the other side of the door. I knock on the door. There's no response. Uh, I try to open the door. It is locked. Hmm. Hmm. Benris, you uh, want to do that thing where you look inside? Uh, let me see if I can get a good angle. I... I'm sure the dorm has a window somewhere. Yeah, but Percy's on the second floor. Hmm. So okay. I... I... Are we going to have to, like, boost you up into a tree? So no, no, his... no. I'll be fine. I'll be fine. Let's so hope he doesn't have his blinds closed. <laughs> you hear a... You see Fenris wave his hand and you hear a small pop from within the... From within the uh, apartment. What? What is going on? You hear from inside. Hey, uh, Percy. Wanna, like, uh, um, open the door, man? You hear locks being unlocked, and, yep, Percy does open the door. He's in, like, a... He's in a light, you know, a bedtime suit. He's just like, what, what, what the hell? Oh, hey, uh, we we were at the the Astro Crag. Sorry, uh, we we tried to get you. Uh, we were trying to get you uh, entry. It didn't work out. We did knock. <laughs> we we did we did knock. <laughs> uh, okay, yeah, yeah, okay. Oh. oh, by the way, this is Fenris. I don't think you met him last time. Percy and... just looks at him in awe. And this is Kron. Ah, yes, hello. You must be the Percy. Come on. Well, you know, so are not, so. Yeah, yeah, so are not. It's good to see you again, buddy. How's it been? How's it been? He goes to shake your hand, so or not. Shakes hand. Oh, God, yeah, yeah, Murdoch's just. Murdoch's resting up. He's still feeling a little nauseated. But, uh, oh, yeah, yeah, everything's fine. Surprised he didn't give you uh, 101 on a uh, dwarf fortress. He he didn't he didn't know I I told him no. <laughs> I'm surprised he wasn't stuff in his sleep. <laughs> but yeah 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 come on in come on in okay you guys staying here for the night I guess. Uh, if you'd yes. mind. Nah nah just you know pick a spot and rest. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, no problem, no problem. Sorry Just... to have woken you up, but dude, we did knock. <laughs> I, I didn't. I, 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 I. And Percy just kind of trails off as he goes back into his bedroom. And I look over to the door to make sure it's still he put all the locks back on it. He did not. Okay, I'll lock all the locks. <laughs> <laughs> How many locks are there on this door? There are three. Yeah. <laughs> there is like, there's the knob there's the lock on the knob itself. There's a bolt. And then there's and a then chain. The chain. Yep. Ah, okay. That's the chain. The chain. Everyone forgets about the chain. But yeah, it's time for everyone to go to sleep. And you guys have your you guys have the money. I I still kind of want to keep watch though, even though we are in a safer place, I still kind of want to have a watch. 
Soren, I will do an alternating watch with you. Yeah. Fenris okay. will take a stance, and he goes, "You know what? I'll, I'll, I'll be fine after a few hours. Just, I'll take the final watch." Huh. <laughs> Just like the old days. <laughs> hey, so we got like a ton of money right now. I just I don't feel safe. Fe Fenris, that's all being asleep. <laughs> but now Fenris, you see Fenris smile nostalgically as he says, "Just like the old days." Aw. In Sornot's mind, he's thinking, "It's only been a fucking week, dude. Come on." <laughs> but, he, but he gets what he means. It's like, oh, adventuring days. Yeah. You're nostalgic about this already. I'm surprised you're an elf. <laughs> and Kron, Kron, Kron sprawls out on a, on half of Percy's couch. <laughs> so Sorry, I'll take the other half. half. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of figured that. I'm still up, and I'm trying to get a hold of my patron. Okay. Unless I have to be asleep and kind of talk to him it in a dream. Uh, you might have to. Oh. Okay, then I'll just wait until it's my turn to sleep, and then I'll do that then. Alright, that sounds good. Yeah, after a few while, you know, after a couple hours, you wake Sora not up. So or not, after your turn at watch, you wake, well, Fenris gets up. Fucking elves in their four hours of sleep. <laughs> That's not Disgusting. even sleeping. Disgusting. That's why I love playing elves, but shh. <laughs> it's, honestly, even... it's honestly one of the only reasons I love playing an elf is because they get four, they only need four hours of sleep to function it's even... normally. It's even better as a Warforged, if you've played as one. No. I... Warforged are like the one UA I'm okay with, because they're actually pretty interesting. They're I don't not... know, I, I hated... Warforged sucked in, like, they were... Uh, how do I want to say this? Okay, so... Everyone wanted to play a Warforged in Eberron in 3.5. They did the same thing for 4e... It's it feels cliche to want to play a Warforged. Fair enough. Got it. I mean, it sounds like a hipster thing, but yeah. No, oh, it's no I understand what you're saying. Yeah, it's, it's like four hours of four hours of sleep where you're just inactive and you can still see everything that's happening. Yeah, and meanwhile, with even with the elves, it's four hours of sleep. That's eight. That's four less hours. For that's a very handy for a wizard, especially. That's. Two uh, two watch shifts that you can take after everyone else is still sleeping. Yeah, I had a watch one time where everyone was arguing to take watch, and we were two shifts in, and my character stayed up for the other two shifts with the people who agreed to take them. Mm. It was just like, yeah, you know, I'm an elf. I get only I only have four hours that I need to rest. Like I'm good now. But yeah, you guys are nothing. Nothing happens, and next session, uh, we'll have to discuss if there's going to be a session on the 18th or not. All right. But next session will be you guys waking up and deciding what where to go from there. All right. I'm gonna stop the live stream. Yep. I'm gonna stop the recording. <laughs>